Good morning, you two, and welcome to Monday's art lesson. I'm excited to be doing some art this week with you. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Um, today, we're going to be looking at an artist called Quentin Blake, and I wonder if any of you have heard of him before. So today it says, how do brilliant artists practice illustration in the style of Quentin Blake? And that's going to be our how do question for the entire week. We're going to be doing some practicing before we do some of our own Quentin Blake style drawings. So today we're going to focus on looking at some different pieces of his work and we're going to look at some front covers of books to do that today. Then we're going to, we're going to talk about his different style because he has quite a distinctive style of drawing um, and you'll see that throughout all of his artwork today. It's quite similar but it's, it's different in the way that he draws characters. So we're going to have a good look at his um, at his drawings today. Then our activity one is we're going to do a bit of a practice drawing and then activity two is we're going to be describing our favourite book cover. So you're going to need quite a few bits and bobs. You're going to need some lined paper to do your writing on and then plain paper to do your drawing on. So you might need to pause me here and go and get all of those bits. Okay, so there he is. That's Quentin Blake. And next to him, there's a few of his drawings of some roll doll characters. And that's why he is so famous, because he is the illustrator for Roll Doll. And he draws all of the pictures that are in his wonderful stories, stories like Fantastic Mr. Fox and Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Roll Doll is the author of those books, which means that he wrote them. And Quentin Blake is the illustrator, which means he draws all the pictures that are inside. Okay, um, so we're going to have a guess. We're going to do a little bit of looking now at some of his artwork. And his artwork is mainly on the front cover of those Roald Dahl books. It's not all that he's done though, but that's what we're going to focus on this week because it's World Book Day on Thursday, which is exciting. So we're going to be looking at book covers today. Okay, so on your whiteboard now, so can you please go and grab your whiteboard and pen? So you might need to pause me. So once you've got your whiteboard and pen, um, I want you to try and guess the book title by looking at the illustration. So this first one, okay, we seem to have a little girl. She has lots of books, okay. So you're gonna need to be racking your brain. Who is it? Who is that character that Quentin Blake has drawn for Roald Dahl? This is a really popular Roald Dahl book. And I want you to try and write the book title on your whiteboard for me now. Okay, do you think you've got it? Right, whisper it for me. Oh yes, some brilliant guesses there. Well done, let's double check. It is, it's Matilda, well done you. So obviously then on the front cover, then Quentin Blake has designed all of the writing and he would have designed the books and he's obviously drawn the main character who is Matilda as well. Okay, oh. This one's a nice, easy one. Who do we think that character is there? And so what is the book title? Okay, what is the title of the book by Roald Dahl? So pause me here and pop on your whiteboard. Okay, right, who did you have? Whisper it to me. Oh, well done. You're all so good at this. Absolutely, of course it was the BFG, the big friendly giant. And I love how Quentin Blake has drawn him here. He's got those big ears, they take up basically his whole head. And he's got those big hands and there's a little character on in his hand, which is Sophie. Oh, this one's a bit trickier. So this one, we seem to have a little boy who's surrounded by lots of insects. And I'll give you a big clue. They are on a piece of fruit. Okay, now the piece of fruit isn't tiny. The piece of fruit is very big. I wonder if any of you know this one. So pop the book title down on your whiteboard. Okay, did any of you guess this one? This one's a bit trickier. So don't worry if you haven't heard of this one before. I want you to whisper it if you do think you know it. Okay, well done. If you've got it, it is. It's James and the giant peach. So James goes on an adventure and he somehow ends up in the middle of a peach where lots of other little creatures live and they go on a big adventure and the peach is ginormous. Okay, um, so that's a really nice one if you haven't read that one before, James and the giant peach. Ah, I bet all of you have done this one before. So it seems to be there are two main characters here. One of them seems to be waving something golden. That's my clue. Okay, so I want you to have a good look at the pictures. Think about, oh, have you seen that before? Oh, 
he seems to be eating some chocolate, another big clue. And I want you to write the book title now on your whiteboard. Okay, did you guess it correctly? Can you whisper it again for me? Yes, of course you've got it right. It is, it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. One of my favorites, I like this one. Perfect stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna move myself out of the way so that you can definitely see everything on there. Okay, so I want you to have a look at these pictures of the Twits. They are two very famous characters in the story, The Twits, Mr. and Mrs. Twit. And they are very, very mean characters, but we're not worrying too much about the characters today. We're instead looking at the illustration that Quentin Blake has done. And the first thing I want you to do is think about the lines that Quentin Blake has used. Are they smooth lines or are they jagged lines? Have a good look at Mr. and Mrs. Twit's hair and Mr. and Mrs. Twit's bodies and what details can you see? So on your whiteboard now I want you to pause the video again and I want you to tell me about the details that you can see. Think about the lines, are they smooth or jagged? Okay and what do their what are their heads like? What are their bodies like? Okay what details has Quentin Blake used to make these characters look as mean as possible. Okay, so pause me here and we'll have a good look at that in just a second. Okay, right, what did you guys come up with? Well done if you've talked about those jagged lines. You might have talked about their big noses as well. So Quentin Blake says that he normally starts with the nose when he's doing his drawing. And both Mr. and Mrs. Twitter have got quite big noses. They've got quite big bodies, but then small heads. We can't see their necks at all. So that is, there's lots of distinctive features that Quentin Blake has used, okay. Um, and this is his this is his style of drawing. So on the screen now we've got the specific style of drawing. So there's jagged, rough lines. And he the drawings look as though they've been done very quickly, as if he hasn't put much work into them at all. They're very rough but actually he spends a really long time doing them that is just his style and I watched a video of him before I made this one it says he always starts with the face especially the nose which is probably why Mrs Twit's nose is so big and pointy he starts with the nose and then sketches around the nose so that's what we're going to try today there isn't too much detail on the face they're quite plain um, he does make their face quite jagged around the edges, okay, and their eyes are quite distinctive, they're just a little circle with a dot in the middle, okay, now Mrs Twit has got different eyes to Mr Twit, his eyes look normal, and Mrs, Mrs Twit's eyes, they look a bit wonky, okay, uh, he uses spiky lines for the hair, okay, only jagged spiky lines, and they've got long thin arms and legs, now this isn't the best picture to show you that, but you'll see in the next few illustrations coming up that he normally has long thin arms and legs with a small body okay right so that's his style of drawing we're going to give that a go um today which would be nice so i'm going to now get sorted and share my screen for you so that we can get cracked Okie dokie, right, we're going to get cracking by listening to this woman. She's going to draw in Quentin Blake style. So make sure you've got your ears on and your eyes on because she's going to show us exactly how um, Quentin Blake would have drawn the BFG. On with it. So before I put pencil to paper, I'm just going to spend a few minutes looking at this reference drawing to see what I can learn about Quentin Blake's style before I begin. Observation is key when looking at other people's art styles. The first thing I notice is that quite a lot of the lines aren't smooth, they're jagged. Even the lines drawn from his arms aren't perfectly straight or smooth. The BFG also has a pointy nose, like a lot of Blake's characters, so these are things we'll need to remember in our own BFG drawing. His feet are also quite pointy and his eye is just a small dot, again like a lot but not all of his characters. I'm going to start my drawing at the top of the page and again this is something that Quentin Blake does too. I'm also going to rough out my sketch and pencil first before adding ink later on. So we can begin with the pointy nose and rather flat forehead before moving on to his very big ear. And there's no smooth lines around here either. So there's just a dot for his eye and a simple line for his mouth. And then I'm ready to move on to his arms and upper body. And remember how we noticed that his arms weren't particularly smooth. 
And believe it or not, it's actually quite hard to draw jagged what your eye sees as smooth. So now on to his shirt and waistcoat, which were a bit more tricky, but the thing that I liked about these illustrations is that despite the jagged lines, all of Blake's characters have a balance of personality, and the drawings have a sense of spontaneity about them, which makes them more interesting as a result. Let me know in the comments box what you think about his drawing style and the illustrations that you've seen of his. It's also interesting to learn that whilst we're talking about these drawing lines as jagged, scruffy or rough, Blake was incredibly meticulous about his drawings, often redoing them many times to get them just right. So moving on to so the she's really trousers, making it jagged we now. To to make sure that our lines aren't just straight or red down. And that's what he said about and long, thin legs. Okay, he's really done that with the BFG. I don't know about you, but I tend to draw everything straight and smooth. So for me, the start is really fun and exciting. And now, All right, I'm going to leave it there because she's actually going to start doing something that we're actually not going to focus on today. So that was her BFG, that's her BFG drawing. Um, and we're going to actually have a go now at trying to draw our very own... our very own boy or girl in that style so I have given it a go okay and that looks something similar to what mine was earlier so what you now need to do is get your blank piece of paper okay and you're going to practice drawing a stick person now this can either be a girl or a boy remember though you need to use those rough lines okay try and make it done as it's been done quickly but don't rush it because you need to make sure that you're doing these specific features. We need those spiky lines for the hair, the rough bodies, long, thin legs. That one's got long, thin legs, okay? And quite little flat feet. You need to start with the face, normally the nose, okay? So remember, the nose is just normally a little hook, and then you've got two eyes, and you draw the face around it. And then, if I was you, I'd go onto the body before coming back to do the hair last. So if you pause me here, and we will see how you got on with your Quentin Blake style stick person. Now remember this is just a practice so don't worry too much if you think oh it doesn't look quite how I wanted it to but give it your very best go for me. So this is a practice drawing. Off you go. Okie dokie, well I hope you enjoyed doing that um, and now we're going to look at some of his illustrations for the Roald Dahl books. So this is The Witches and over the years Quentin Blake has redesigned the front covers of many of the books. Okay, so you can see the first one, it's got the main witch in it, okay, and it has lots of people adoringly looking at her and that is the main covers, that's the one with the white background. Okay, then he changed it again and we can't see the main which anymore only a little tiny picture of her and it's got lots of other different pictures in that one though okay a few little features it seems to have her big hands in there and you've got the main character there down the bottom and grandma at the top so there's a few different bits and bobs in that one but the main the um newest cover okay just has gone back to having the main witch in there and the little boy from the story so he's redesigned them lots and lots over the years and this is not the only cover that he's had to redesign so i want you to pause me here now and on your whiteboard i'd like you to tell me what's the same what have they what have they used what has Quentin Blake used that's exactly the same in all of the front covers? And what has he changed? Okay, so pause me here and we're gonna have a look at what are the similarities and what are the differences? Off you go. Okie dokie, yes, so well done if you've got the characters are still the same, but actually some of the colours are different. Okay, he sometimes hasn't included all of the same characters in there. Um, <clears throat> Also, we've got the writing, it, it looks very different. And that's something we're going to use at the end of the week. We're going to change our font style for each thing that needs to be written on there. But if the writing is all the same, the words, okay, they've all got the author, they've all got illustrated by Quentin Blake, and they've all got the title of the book, but they're all different. They're all written in different ways. So lots of similarities and lots of differences. Okay, so I've shown you now two um, fantastic Mr. Fox front covers. Now I want you to have a good look at them. I've numbered them number one and number two. And you're gonna look at the illustrations by Quentin Blake and you're also going to look 
at the writing and the colors and you're going to decide which one do you prefer do you prefer number one or do you prefer number two now my example is written down the bottom of the screen so i'm just going to read that one out for you so i've said I like the book cover too for Fantastic Mr. Fox as Quentin Blake has drawn Mr. Fox dancing in the middle and he looks happy. I like the colour of this book cover because it is bright and I like the spiky font used. So what I quite like about this one is that the title of the book is in quite spiky, looks like handwriting and it's got that blue background behind it. It looks very nice. I like it against the green. And I've, I'll finish off by saying Quentin has drawn more characters on the second book cover and they look interesting. So if you look behind Mr. Fantastic Mr. Fox, he's got, seems to have his children down the bottom. There's a little background behind Mr. Fox as well. And then at the top, there's two of the mean enemies that are in the story. I'm not sure if any of you have read it, but again, it's another really brilliant story. Um, so I've that's why I prefer that one. There's more on there, okay? More characters on there. I like the colours. I like what Mr Fox is doing in the middle. He's dancing around. He looks very happy. That's why I have chosen that one as my preference. So in your books now, on your lined piece of paper, you're going to just you're going to tell me which one you prefer, okay? So you might say I like book cover one because I like the colour purple. I like that Mr. F Mr. Fox looks mischievous, okay, and I like the fonts that you've used. You might say things like that. So you have a look at the writing, have a look at the characters, what he's actually drawn, and have a good think about which one that you prefer. Is it number one or is it number two? So use my example as one to help you out, but have a go now at writing your own. Which choice do you prefer? Is it number one book cover or is it number two? So pause me here and can you write that sentence for me? in your books, off you go. Okie dokie, well that's us actually done for today. So well done for a brilliant art lesson. I hope you enjoyed your practicing of using that Quentin Blake style drawing. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow because tomorrow we're actually gonna be watching a video of Quentin Blake and he's gonna show us how to draw Willy Wonka, the main character from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I hope you enjoy that and I will see you again tomorrow. So take care and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.